Hello everybody and welcome to episode 50 of the Coffee Club podcast. We're here in St. Moritz, Oliver and I. This is our first time doing one without George, unfortunately. Couldn't make it today. He's taking the long road back from Italy, <laughs> which is where rather than coming back direct, you go on vacation with your parents for a few days, which is lovely. I mean, hey, I, if I you would... can do it, you can do it. I mean, I would probably be in the same position as George right now. Yeah, if, if I had the option, that's what I'd be doing. But it was just really hard to schedule it this week with the race and all that. So we were like, we just busted out today, just the two of us. And hopefully later get on some of the girls that are here on our team as well. So, yeah, we'll just see how this one goes. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. It's going to be a bit of an experiment, I think. So, yeah. we'll, see how, we'll see how we go. I think it will. But if you can't tell, we're here in St. Moritz up on our terrace of the OAC place, which is super nice. It is a little loud, so apologies if there's a little noise going on because there's a lot of buses that go on this street and there's a lot of cranes and just a lot of stuff happening. But, you know, we're still going to get it done and hopefully it's not too bad for your ears. So... Pretty much to start off, I just want to touch on a couple of exciting things that are coming soon because, I mean, I guess I already said it's episode 50. That's like a big deal. Mm, that's a half century. <laughs> it's a half century, baby. So I feel like we should be doing some big celebration for it. But unfortunately, just with the timing of things and where we are at, in the year, it's, you know, we're just on the road and we're just pretty dialed in right now. So it's really hard to, to do much for it. So I think the plan for us is to delay celebrations and... Obviously, we'll have episode 52 coming around in a little bit. I don't know if we'll be able to do the one-year celebration on that episode. Hopefully, we will, but maybe it'll be a week or two later. But mm. we want to do a big uh, like one-year coffee club celebration episode, which I think... This is what I'm thinking right now. Go for it. Something along the lines of a live show where we have a few things to talk about. Like We do a bit of preparation, but then we leave a lot of it up to hopefully people joining and asking us questions and shooting the shit and just we just get super drunk during the show yep pretty much (laughs) we just we just come with a lot of uh little goodies and then we just sit down on a nice hopefully nice afternoon in colorado yeah and just see where it see where it goes i think that's a great idea i think uh we we have discussed it between the three of us like being able to set up some of a live kind of interactive uh, episode, like a special one, and what better way to do it than to celebrate a year of of uh, being able to do it week by week. So the plan would be to to maybe in a week in advance, we would just give people the notif- notification that like this is happening, this is what we're going to be do, this is the time that we're going to do it, and give a time like come like a period or a limit, and we'll just get it on live. Hopefully, get some questions and uh, yeah. crash some beer- beers or whatever yeah. you want to do, and to see uh, <laughs> see me, George, and Morgan. Uh, change uh yeah. throughout the podcast the transitions and maybe you'd want to join us for that as well in your own little celebration of one year of coffee club yeah. which yeah it is crazy how quickly it's gone episode 50 that's yeah it's been incredible so we uh we want to thank yeah. the way we're going to thank the fans for coffee club is to watch watch pretty much us getting drunk hopefully and us doing you know looking stupid so yeah more, more stupid than usual really but yeah hopefully putting out a banger of an episode so that's that. We also have to do our weekly hype up of the gala. Yep. Our year party, which, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I, I've been pretty... Recap from last year. What happened last year? Like, last year, we hype hyped up. it up a lot. And <laughs> it was like such a letdown. It was just, like, it was fine, but it just, we just overhyped it so much. This year, the hype train is... It's still going. It's rolling. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting going right now. About to leave the station, about to take off. So, I don't know, man. I'm just like, I... I do want to try not overhype it, just keep it pretty mellow, and then just hopefully be surprised. Like, wow, that was such a good night. Because I feel like that's how it always is. Mm. Whenever you try to do too much organizing or put too much into it, it just is really hard to live up to those expectations. But it's always the ones that surprise you that are the best ones. 100%. 100%. So, well, that's the problem with me with it is that I love to organize uh, shit like you've this. Been getting, you've been talking about it all year. As, yeah. as soon as we got done with the last one, you've been... You've started the, <laughs> the hype train for this upcoming one. So I'm so excited. I'm like trying to get it, the, the make it the best night possible for everyone. And yeah. like, obviously we want to build a reputation that it's going to be a good night every year and people always turn up, you know? Yeah, hopefully. Like and the Great Gatsby, you know, like that exactly, party that they have. Exactly. It's freaking, everyone comes back. So that's the plan. But yeah, right now, like the best thing is, you're right, Morgan, is to not hype it up too much, but then give it a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a nudge, a little yeah. nudge. You yeah. know? We want people to... To have anticipation of what the night's going to be but 
we probably shouldn't yeah overdo it too much yeah i don't know hopefully we can just bring the boulder running community together again briefly. That's, the, that's the goal that's the mission honestly looking back on it like a little post I don't know what you'd call it, like a reflection. Re reflection. I don't think we did much for the boulder running community last year. <laughs> no. Looking back on it, I think we did get people from a lot of different groups there, but yeah. I don't think we made any I, lasting impacts. I don't think there was any cohesion. I don't think yeah. anybody really like hung out with anybody else. I think uh, Tinfoil had uh, a long run the next day. Yeah. And then uh, Team Boss. They had, I think they, all, they, had, yeah, they had yeah, had something going on, but some of them early. some of them were still racing. I think like some yeah, had marathons or something. And then um, I think we had Roots there. We had some other a couple groups. Of, yeah. but they, and they all came and they were party vibing and everything. But we just didn't, we didn't get the impact that no. we wanted. And I think we this didn't year, penetrate this in the way year, we wanted to. We're gonna, we've been, we sat down with uh, the four of us, Gus included. And we've just realized that we need to give this one, like, you know, that's the goal. That's the mission. Even if it's not to overhype it, but to make a connection. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can do that in our new place. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. In reference to the podcast specifically, we have an idea to film an episode on almost, yeah, a post gala, I mean, a pre gala, sorry, episode where yep. probably a more intimate setting, just our teammates. And we do some form of like, again, like a drinking game type thing or just. Just a more fun, jovial episode where we try to include a lot of like everyone from the team that's there, but just asking them like fun questions and stuff. Yeah. So for that, in regards to that, start dropping questions in the comments or whatever that you want to ask. I don't know, Joe Klecker, for example. Joe Klecker would be a great one, you know? <laughs> Imagine having Joe uh, pre-gala, having a few beers and you get to ask him some questions. So yeah, I, you definitely get a unique opportunity here, hopefully to, to get a bit personal with, with the athletes and celebrate their seasons as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that would be a, a fun idea to do. And also, I think it would help with the gala anyway, get, get, the, get the juices flowing. Yeah, just get the vibes going. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So that's the upcoming for us, hitting that one year soon. So we're going to celebrate that. And yeah, as we said the whole time, moving into the fall, we want to just do more cool, different episodes. Obviously, at this point in the season, we're just pretty dialed in. We're just racing all that and just kind of recapping. But we'll, we hopefully in the fall, we'll be able to do a lot of cool stuff, a lot of new stuff for you guys. Going to have the merch coming out maybe no at some point eventually it's gonna come out don't <laughs> so worry it's gonna we'll, come we'll be out. doing all that but yeah it, like moving on from that the episode today there's not anything too crazy to talk about it's just this i was thinking about it this is the first time i would i think we went oh for three yeah and we struck out uh, as, a, as, as, you, as, you've, as you've written down here catching some l's that's how i that's how i described morgan it. has described this episode will be titled uh the boys catch some l's yeah um but yeah this is our first episode since uh luzon for me and then you and more uh you and george and reveretto so yeah um yeah so we can we can go through our races obviously george will have his recap uh if he wants to yeah uh the next week i mean it might be a bit past at that point yeah that that's okay so now that i'm finally racing i'm realizing no i guess the difficulties because i wasn't racing the whole time it's just you and george and then i would we would have the episode the next week and i would ask you all these questions about it. and i'm finally realizing how that can be a little bit annoying because especially if it's a bad one you want to you know process it over the next day or two and then you don't really want to keep thinking about it yeah it's just like it's just the same old same old type thing you just get over it and then well, it's, it's good yeah. for my self-hatred so yeah like, oh, I, I repeat it in my head constantly but so uh, for you it's good and for me it's good but for others probably not so much but i think the nice thing about what we can do and what we try to do with this podcast is, is give reflection on not just the good stuff but the bad stuff too a lot of people probably comment on social media when people are doing good they post a lot they share a lot but when they're doing bad they don't usually reflect or say anything publicly and like that's people's obviously personal preference but i think if if we're all comfortable doing it to be able to shed light on like what goes through the, the process of having the roller coaster ride of a running career where you're going exactly. to have bad races so exactly um but yeah over three it's going to be a, <laughs> it's going to be a depre depressing uh depressing chat but who wants to go first yeah i think I think we I, sh you I, should probably go first go just because you did. But yeah, I just want to say, I, like in regards to what you just said, I think we are fortunate to yeah. have this outlet where you can. Because when things go well, I think it's really easy just to say like, yeah, it went well, tick, tick, tick. And everyone's like, wow, yeah, they did great. But when you do bad, it's often a lot more complicated. You are mm. thinking about the reasons a lot more intensely. And it's hard to process that and put that in, say, like an Instagram post or whatever. It is difficult. So to be able to talk it through in a longer form you know medium like this i think is pretty cool and because we all have different reasons for why we race bad yeah it's like if if a team races well it's like 
it's all the same reason they race well, if that makes sense. It's just, oh yeah, they all had great training or they all had good coaching. But when a team races bad, everyone has like individual reasons, generally speaking. And uh, it's not always the same, yeah. Yeah, and so I think it's cool to be able to go through that. And I just realized like, I think the bad stuff is actually pretty good because it's just so relatable because mm. the reality is we all set really high goals. Yeah. And I think running for most people, most of the time you're missing your goals. I've obviously for some people they go out there and it's pure excellence every time and you've been that like that for a lot like the last three years so it's like pretty impressive to see that but the reality for most people is they set really high goals they try really hard to chase them and then things happen and it doesn't play out the way that they perhaps dreamt it up so yeah i think navigating this stuff is pretty interesting and for you at Lausanne, we did talk about this last episode a bit because I'm pretty sure you filmed the last episode from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was in Michigan getting treatment from our magician, Jason Ross. Um, but given the full context, like I went into, it was a whirlwind couple of weeks for me after Worlds to Com Games, like yeah. the emotional lows and highs that came with that. And what I learned is that like safe, self, uh, self-hatred can take you a long way. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely really just harnessed that energy like Goku and just destroyed uh, myself to make sure I could do something great because I feel like I've been leading into this year with a goal is like, you know, you want to medal at championships. Um, and like for me as well, I've been racing so well on the Diamond League circuit, but it's not championship racing really. Like it's one race. It's not like a, like a, like a meet uh, combined like kind of championship setting. So that was something that I struggled with mentally. And then coming off Com Games, the, the reaction and the amount of... Uh, positive energy I got off it was fantastic but also exhausting yeah. and uh, I was actually dealing with an IT kind of niggle um, during com games luckily it didn't really affect me racing and then after just the travel getting back to to Boulder I really didn't run probably more than 10 miles most runs and I was actually like pretty fit it was just I think it was an inflated IT band it was overuse and Dathan and I were just trying to make sure like we get it go get it back going for Luzon and Dathan actually called me and told me you probably shouldn't do Luzon you should probably focus on Zurich but me being the person that I am and I think I'm invulnerable because I've never been injured which is, is, is the I wrong assumption I think you're invulnerable as well yeah it's the wrong <laughs> assumption that I, sh I should have shouldn't have had but like I thought oh, I'll get through it I'll be able to get to Luzon and yeah and the plan was to like literally the the plan and the mindset was to get on the line not to race and that's what messed me up when I got into the race and uh I was able to see Jason when I was in Michigan. He really helped me out. Um, I was able to see Kyle at New Leaf Chiropractic, and I was able to get running again. I did like some half workouts, and I was still extremely fit. And then once I got into Luzon, my body was great. Like it didn't affect me at all in the race. But I remember walking out onto the line. I got to the line, and I was like, "Oh shit! I haven't thought about this race at all." Usually, I have like a mental rehearsal of like, "Okay, well, this is what you're gonna do. This is what's gonna happen." Um, this is the ideas that might potentially, you know, get you set for the race. I didn't have any of that. It was all focused on just getting to the line, health, yeah. like healthy, which I am. Um, but just the IT band thing was just like a massive mental block for me. And then the emotional roller coaster that I had. And, <laughs> and I was like, this is probably not going to go very well. And I think Ritz knew that as well. Um, and I thought, what better way to uh, wake myself up than go straight to the front behind the pacer at 151 pace uh, in Luzon, which is what I did, and I immediately panicked. Like you I just good at the front though, I just honestly. panicked. Yeah, I know, I, I mean, I was trying to relax, but I was panicking, because yeah. I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm setting myself up for Jakob just to like, just get momentum past me. And that's kind of what happened. And then the last lap, I just went to a dark place, and I just like choked super bad. And I crossed the line, and I was just really embarrassed, but I wasn't extremely disappointed in the sense of like, just like, oh, it's another bad race. But it, it was more like me going like, okay, like I learned now that I probably shouldn't be focusing. If I'm trying to get to the end result, which is the Diamond League final, I shouldn't be focusing on like just doing Luzon because I can do Luzon. Um, and that's the mindset that I had. And I learned something about myself there was like, you gotta sometimes take some sacrifices, take some, like, cause I could just go in and race. I thought I could just go race every race and be fine. But um, at that high level and dealing with something like that after all the travel, it just, it was the accumulation of the year and i knew that really i should have been more realistic and i didn't think about it and uh, that was a mistake on me and that's a big reason why i didn't race to what i wanted to race and it's helped me refresh and reset i've been up been able to come up here to st moritz with with morgs and and george and the team and been able to get a reset button before the final so it's been that's been great and my it band's been uh 
it's still a little bit around, but it's been uh, it's been very good. I had a good workout a couple of days ago. So, but overall, yeah, it was actually a good learning experience, but shocking race. Yeah, I mean, it was watching it like I could tell something was a little bit off with you at 800. Just when you, I think you just I could just tell like from yeah. the way you looked, but you still were right up there. But then when Yucca went past you and a bit of a gap opened up, I was like, oh yeah, like that's not normal. Yeah. So then I was like, shit, but. I think everything you're saying, like your takeaways are just like pretty perfect because I think you do just have to learn this stuff the hard way. You Mm -hmm. know, it's like you can't take those Diamond League races for granted. Those amazing performances, they they happen with a lot of preparation. And so when the preparation is interrupted by injury or some other mental stuff, whatever, then yeah that's the sometimes you can get away with it but sometimes i mean it'll you can't always get away you. with it yeah, yeah you can't always get away with it and normally when you find that out is when it's too late yeah <laughs> when you're when you're, when when you're, you're 800 meters in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's just the way it goes and <laughs> yeah as you said uh getting ready for zurich mm. diamond league final now which is going to be your last race of the year yep so it's like just everything going towards that it's been just an absolute crazy season i'm sure we'll do some bigger reflection mm. uh in the coming episodes for you but yeah it must feel pretty good to see the finish line now six days away or seven days away six to, yeah and, and it's great to do it in zurich like on headquarters is down the road and we're gonna have a good uh good support system there and i feel like it's gonna be a great race to um hopefully pull out a big one yeah so yeah. that's the plan anyway yeah i'm not sure if our next episode i'm, I'm imagining it might end up coming out after zurich but I'm not sure. I don't want to get too ahead of myself with that. So, yeah, maybe this will be the last episode that comes out before Zurich. Yeah. But either way, that's that's what always got going on. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be sweet. Just hopefully you can finish off the season with a bang. Yeah. And then, hopefully I'm bringing a big diamond home. That's <laughs> yeah. what I want. Do you get a big diamond from you this get, one? You get a big diamond trophy with a bit oh, of Oh, yeah, I it. think yeah. I've seen that. They're pretty cool trophies. It's probably the coolest trophy I've ever seen, to be honest. Like, it, it's, it's sick. That's just like all the Diamond League champs get that. So yeah, if you win the Diamond League final, you get that, and, so, a, and a big chunk of change. And a big chunk of change. So it's a, it's a it's a big race, and yeah, excited to to go and finish it off. Yeah. So yeah, I man, just another. It's so cliche, just saying like, oh yeah, great learning experience, and like I I hate I hate like being cliched and all that, but I mean that's what it's all about, really. It's just the ups and downs and just uh, navigating your way through them so that's how it goes and I had a very similar experience as well where it was yeah it was a bit new for me so I went and raced in Rovereto which is a town in Italy just having a four hour drive away from here so pretty pretty chill pretty easy just driving down the day before and luckily for me I had uh, teammates George and Jonas racing it as well it's always nice to get to race with some teammates after my other two races were just solo solo riding solo ventures and so it was i mean it was cool i was really excited i i was like 5k is this year for people around like our level or my level have been kind of weird where the opportunities have been like just not amazing like there have been some there obviously people have run quick this year but that's like you know in races that are probably too quick for someone like me and then I would say normally there's more like 13-0 type races, uh, but this year it doesn't really seem like there were that many, and especially for me with the timing of when I was healthy and stuff, I was just very limited, and so I was hoping it would be uh, that type of race, and I was feeling pretty good going into it, like my Achilles, everything starting to come around and just like banging out some good workouts, and so I knew that the pacing was going to be really quick for this one because that's what Yemen Kripa mm. wanted. He wanted to try break 13. So I think he wanted 7.48 at 3K, which is like really quick. Like that's probably too quick that's for me right now. That's probably a bit too quick, yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't say probably because I tried it and I died. So it's definitely too quick for me right now. <laughs> but the thing with me is I just haven't raced. This was my first 5K since the Olympics. It's been so long. So how, how long is that just for <laughs> reference? The Olympics like, was in 2021. It's in like August. 13 months or yeah. something. So that's, that's, that's almost a year and a month. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it was a long time. And I don't know, I just really wanted to get after it pretty much. Yeah. You know, I just like, I'm just done with like chilling and like trying to like be conservative. You just want to see what you can do. I just want to see what I could do and, and test myself and get after it. And that is kind of a new thing for me. Like, for example, when I race a PB race for a 5K, I'd say I normally go out moderate, but then I'm able to close pretty quick. And this one, I was more like, no, I just want to like get out hard and see what happens. And 
I mean, so I got like really like mentally pumped up to do that. I was like so dialed in. I was like, fuck, like I'm just gonna try to go out with it no matter what it is pretty much and just see what happens. And going into the race was such a shit show because it was just like, you don't really know like who's in the field and mm. stuff, which is pretty important. And then, <laughs> yeah, the pacing was like, literally like between the warm up and like going to the start line people are still asking the meet director about pacing like oh and like trying to change it like oh i think we should go out a little slower uh carlos birmingham was there with the mtc guys he's an australian runner and he wanted to ask the meet director to change it to 755 at 3k which i think would have been an amazing move Decision? yeah that would have been a great call but no i guess yemen wanted 748 it was his training partner um that was pacing the first 2k yemen Kripper is an italian distance runner for anyone who doesn't know he just won two medals at european champs in the 5k 10k he won the 10k so he's really good but he's a little bit unreliable i would say in in certain races and so yeah i just had no idea like what the field was going to be and obviously ideally when you're running a 5k you have a lot of bodies around you and it's like a good race but yeah i just wasn't sure i was like fuck it i'm just gonna get after it and see what happens and that's what happened like we went out really quick like 235 first k and then i ended up going through 3k and 752 and i thought i felt pretty good which was like kind of crazy because i think the fastest i've probably ever gone through 3k before was maybe 758 or something like that maybe even not that quick but i guess i didn't feel that good because then i just started dying and i started running like 67s and once you start doing that there's not much coming back uh, the guys in front of me gapped me. That already gapped me a little bit at 3K. And I was just like, not good. I just had Sam Parsons sitting on me the whole time. Whole race. I was just like, fuck, man. Like, I need some help right now. But, I mean, he was obviously hurting a lot as well. And then I just, like, I just hung on. But, like, I didn't I didn't give up. But I was obviously, like, you get a bit mentally out of it when you're in that kind oh, of... Oh, you go to a place and yeah. you can't get back out. Particularly with a 5K. Yeah, I was in, like, the no, no man zone. Like, just... Yeah just not great and then um i ended up like speeding up a bit on the last lap because there were some guys behind that were had gone out a bit slower that were kicking down um mike foppen and hugo hay mm. who were really good runners quality runners yeah yeah and uh so i just they were like i was looking back on the last lap and i could see them catching me but i put in a bit of a surge in the last 50 meters so they didn't catch me so i came fourth which was like honestly like fourth place in that race like good result but just like the fact that i went out in 752 and then I ended up dying and running 1319 is just not pretty at all and in my head obviously that's not the way it played out like in my head I was like I got hard and then I run a really fast time and then I come home happy mm. celebrating etc etc but with the boys with the boys like that's that's how I wanted it to go uh it didn't go like that and I don't know another cliche but like after it I was just like I was disappointed with the result that I wasn't able to like finish it off like because obviously the, it was one in 1308 so people did go and run really quick there times yeah. that i, I want to be running right now and I'm like i want to be able to do that even in races when like it's not ideal i would love to be able to do that so i was disappointed that i couldn't do that but i was like happy that i got after it which is just like yeah again like a kind of cliche thing to say because then on the flip side i was like well i wish i could have been a bit smarter and maybe gone out a touch more conservative and like worked through the field but I don't know, man, just, like, full, like, perspective on it. It's just, like, I'm happy that I went and raced like that and got after it. And I can tell that I'm really fit from that race. Yeah. I think I'm the fittest I've ever been, honestly, which is, I mean, amazing. Like, I'm feeling healthy and fit. So, I'm very, very happy about that. I just fucking hate, like, not racing while I'm, like, making cliche like excuses and stuff well but. it was interesting for me like because watching it and obviously everybody's been able to follow um our journeys through the through the coffee club pod but you've definitely followed morgan's and like his his uh experiences with injury and then trying to get back into uh a place that he wants to be as a professional runner in in this group setting and it's interesting for me to hear your reflection on it because like you go for it because like really there's not many 5Ks left in the season. There's not, there's pretty that much no, there's no opportunities, right? This is the last one and it's unfortunate because like now you're in it probably in a shape where if this was, a, you know, if you were in this position uh, like earlier in the year, yeah, like you'd have way season. more opportunities yeah. to run 5Ks and you'd probably know like you'd come off that race disappointed but know that you can go again and go maybe a bit more concerned, like maybe like, you know, 755 yeah um and then be able to close hard and like you know you could do it again but that's the 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 thing that must annoy you a little bit was that that's it for the race like yeah. it's the only race but 
I mean, the nice thing for you is like, you came off, like experience it for me, you came off Tokyo pretty much just a cripple. Yeah. And uh, it was like yeah, fucking so depressing seeing that because like, fuck it. Like, it was just tough. Like, it's yeah. really hard to see you, particularly like your teammates and your close friends like going through that. Particularly Morgan, when like our journeys, we've just kind of followed it um, together. And to see that with like a best friend was like tough to watch. But then seeing the rise, it, it's good to see like this is the end of the year where you're in the best shape you've ever been in. And it's going to be like giving you much more fire, much more like of a hungry kind of status going into hopefully um, a really big next next yeah. season. So, um, but yeah, like you still got races coming up, which is cool. I got one more. Yeah, one yeah. more of this season. Zagreb 3K on the 11th. So like a 3K is going to be, you know, that's that's That'd still, that's going to be fun um, in Croatia, you know, mm -hmm. go soul searching. Yeah. You know, fi find find who you really are in Croatia and just, and just run really fast there. But um, it is like, I can imagine from your perspective, because like, it's just tough when you you have you have the right recipe, but the oven is just cooking too hot at the moment. You <laughs> That's know? a great fucking metaphor. You have the right recipe, everything's set, yeah. but they've overcooked the cake because you just you need a better oven. Yeah, we need to get a better oven. I and Roveretto wasn't the oven for Morgs. It wasn't Morgs, the right oven. Morgs' oven is going to be hopefully. I mean, like look at Sound Running, for example. Yeah, like those type of meats. Those are type like of meats are the meats where you, well, you want it because like you're in that shape where it's like I'm not racing to. Why well, I'm racing to compete. Morgan's racing to compete, but Morgan's racing to see what he can do. Yeah. So like a race where George and I paced um, the sound running yeah. meet for uh, Joe when he ran 1304. Like that was a race for Joe to get the standard, but also see what he could run. Yeah. And Morgan's kind of in that, probably in that kind of situation, but just end of the year. So it's the wrong time. But yeah. the nice thing is you're healthy, you're the fit as you've ever been. And, um, and we're in St. Moritz. Yeah. Wow, this has been a nice little therapy session. Yeah. I'm so excited for fall training. I, I'm sure you can't stop talking about it. That's all I'm you talk so about excited, is fall man. training. I just I was so sad to miss it last year because it's just I'm not gonna say it's definitely my favorite training like time of the year. Like I like all training a lot in different ways, but no, I'm just gonna say it's my favorite training yeah, time. It, it of is year. It's 100%. like it's just so chill. Like we just train hard and but then we also get to like have fun and just relax vibe. And especially for us getting ready for cross country races hopefully and all mm. that. That'll be really cool. Obviously, haven't raced cross country since college. college. So, yeah. how would you do in college? I can't remember. Are you pretty good in college for cross? Nah, we we don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> I've, I've been I've re been reliving my glory days for too many years now. I need to Dude. I need to have some new ones. So, yeah, <laughs> moving on from that. Very excited for a fall training just to, because I mean that's another part of it with me. I'm just like yeah, I just don't quite have the base that I need as well. Mm. Like I don't have the race sharpness and the base that I need. I think I'm, I was able to like do great this season in terms of achieving my goals of like just continuing to be more and more healthy i'm not perfect in that sense yet i still have a lot of work to do which i'm going to do in the off season but yeah i think i've done good at being healthy and then getting in pretty good shape and just an, just more time under the dathan ritz nine training system i think will uh be really good <laughs> going forward Nathaniel, yeah shout out to whoever uh, said <laughs> what did he what did he say i just said it said it was nathan's nathaniel is dathan nathaniel yeah and it's 100 percent correct nathaniel. or the other alternative was if nate is yeah. short for nathan is date short for <laughs> dathan. dathan so we're gonna start going either date or nathaniel see how he reacts to that. all of those so yeah and we are back from a brief interlude and we have a very special guest back on the show alicia monson how you doing pretty good thanks for having <laughs> me guys welcome back so what we're going to do right now is a little bit of an experiment. Uh, we were just talking before about some ideas on new, exciting, innovating things for the show. And <laughs> one thing that I was thinking about is a bit of a segment where we just have more, a little bit, we have guests on, but just for like a question or two. And it would be a really good way to get to know like some of like our teammates and stuff. Yeah. Man, if they don't, they don't, we don't know each other very well. <laughs> no. So. Yeah. For us to get to know each other and then just to spread the love. For, I think like we, we constantly get people asking us just to have like people from yeah. the team on, you know, yeah. especially like the girls and all that. And it's if we have like it's a lot more preparation to have like a full episode with someone, you know. Yeah. So if we have this kind of segment, which do we what's the name of it going to be? You came I up with a good one. I think you should just put up a poll to ask yeah. what the segment name should be. We could yeah. actually get, yeah, everyone else's input. <laughs> yeah. um, 
so they could do the job for us, really. Yeah. So we don't do any yeah. work. But Genius. I don't even remember what I had suggested. You said, I think I you said know. OEC Hot Seat. Oh, yeah, yeah. OEC Some, Hot Seat. Something like that. that, that that's going to be the temporary name for today. That's the that placeholder. Maybe it'll stick it. if people yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, I think as well, like, people have heard from three of us um, a lot about who we are, but our team doesn't get the same kind of... Uh, kind of love so it'd be nice to spread that a little bit yeah through the coffee club podcast yeah and uh we're gonna gonna you know just spice it up a little bit yeah give a little get a little pizzazz it'll there. be like some serious questions some funny today we have two and we're hoping to ask the same questions to alicia cinta and sage and see that there are different perspectives on it so nothing too long nothing too intense like you know uh, yeah just just kind of not full rapid fire but yeah um just have some fun with it so honest answers too yeah we don't want we don't want any uh <laughs> answers that wouldn't come from the honesty and i know our girls are the oac oac they girls keep they keep it real all right so on and off the track <laughs> i'll leave the question mark so what's our first question today well alicia i think as you oh you are the guest um would you want the serious question or the the, the stupid question um i guess serious serious question, question. first so <laughs> As, as three males on the podcast, we don't really get to, if we have a lot of female viewers. Uh, do we have female viewers? Uh, we have some. Okay. We're well, mostly male. Yeah, but mostly male. numbers, actually? I think it's like 90% male. Yeah, it's pretty male-dominated. Um, but female. I think if there are female listeners out there, particularly uh, track runners, cross-country runners, they're mm-hmm. inspiring to be in your position, um, to have, you know, any advice coming from somebody like you would be, would be huge. And us three, we can't give that kind of advice. So the question is... Uh, what advice would you give to our girl listeners um, about your experiences getting to the levels that you've been able to or been wanting to achieve in, in your sport? So like going yeah. through high school, going through college and going through now as a professional runner, how, what do you think is the best advice you could give to them on how you've been able to succeed in such an incredible way as a, mm-hmm. um, as a woman distance athlete? I feel like, yeah, that's a good question because like, I mean... I'm sure people ask that question to runners a lot, but it kind of, everyone has their own journey to get to places and stuff. But I think like looking back, I think I took things like too seriously earlier. <laughs> yeah. And like the That's higher, to hear. the higher you go, like the more you realize that you're really just doing it because you love to do it. Um, and so just like also the fact that you don't, get good overnight and it's just years and years of being involved in the sport and getting better so I think like for high school and college listeners definitely just like taking one day at a time and just enjoying being with your team and like I don't know it definitely it takes a long time to continue and having consistency in the sport is kind of the most important thing that I've found to keep getting better I'm guessing you guys would kind of agree with that yeah I think that's so true. Mm. I, that, that's amazing advice. Definitely, definitely not taking it too seriously is a, yeah. is a thing that people, because people think it's all about being serious. Like oh, that's yeah. the thing, right? It's, and it's hard to be patient as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you want results ASAP and, but yeah, I, that's, that's like, I think it's really good for people to hear yeah. because it, it is hard because you always, that's one of those things that you know, I think you know that, but you always forget it because yeah. just like human emotions and stuff get caught up yeah. and yeah, if you're not enjoying it, fuck, like, it's pretty brutal out <laughs> it's, there. It's, it's extremely <laughs> what's, brutal. What's the point? But yeah. great answer, Alicia. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Stupid yeah. question coming up. You ready for it? Yeah. So. It's not that stupid. <laughs> it's, it's, stupid. It's, it's not stupid, but it's a question that I thought would be funny to ask um, as a woman. Uh, this I think runner. this would be really good for you. Actually, all three of you, I think, will, will all three have of you experiences it, with yeah, this. Yeah, I'm sure you've ha- had this occur at one point. Um, because I think a lot of males in particular have a bit of an ego when they run. And... Uh, <laughs> You're an incredible runner. You run extremely fast. Uh, how do you deal with the situation if it's ever happened to you where you're just running, you're just going for a regular run, it's not a workout, <laughs> and you have, there's like a hobby jogger or a male yeah. jogger. You know where this question's coming from. I right? ranted about <laughs> yeah, this. Before. So you have a, like a hobby jogger or a male jogger and they just like, you pass them because yeah. they're just not running as quick as you are for your regular runs because you're an Olympian, right? Yeah. And uh, they see that as a challenge and they try and come up to you and pass you again. Um, and then there's this kind of like this little duo that goes on. How yeah. do, what do you do? If you've had any experiences, you can tell us as well. <laughs> but what do you, would you do in that situation? Would you just drop them or would you just let them go and yeah. let them have their ego? This, so yeah, I've definitely ranted before about this and it like happens surprisingly often. Really? <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly often. Especially, well, especially because we end up 
like in Boulder, there's so many runners like who aren't just professional runners, like just lots of recreational runners. And we come to places where there's lots of runners. And, um, and it usually is like I'm on my easy day and maybe they're going like around seven minute ish pace and it's just super awkward. And I also like, don't really like to talk to people if I'm alone on easy days, like I'm just out for a run. So I usually end up like, I have definitely a, an ego for like, I feel like a lot of us women at the professional level just end up having an ego about it. <laughs> Anyways, Tell me all. That, uh, yeah, I definitely like speed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's I what I was like, expecting. Yeah, I don't know. I, if I feel really bad, then I'll just like slow down, but I don't know. I'm always also, I'm definitely like feminist, and so yeah. I'm just like, if some guy passes me and I know that they're like, Working to pass me, I will just. You go will go again. You just punish them for making. <laughs> yeah. Have you done that? Have you done that before? You've done that before, right? Oh yeah. yeah. There was one run recently when we were in Boulder. It happened three times on one run. <laughs> oh really? With I, different guys or the same with guy? Different guy. Oh, oh my god. Uh, but that's just me. Well, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's tragic. Damn. Yeah. That yeah. Fuck, oh, that's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta take the hit to your ego and just know where you stand, and yeah. you can't keep up with Alicia oh, yeah. on easy day. I'd love, to, I'd love to see their mindset going into that, cause like they're trying to like run really hard, and then Alicia yeah. just looks effortless, just passes them. They're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Just like try oh. to steal my breathing as yeah. much as possible to show that I'm like not breathing at all. Just be chilling. Just be chilling. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's it for the questions. Yeah, you but uh, just a little note as well for our listeners: Alicia did have a crazy race in Lausanne. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. um, we can't just ignore that, I guess. Yeah, but, so almost winning. You got to work on your lean. Um, I, know. I think I'm working on it. I'm yeah. just gonna start leaning every single rep. Of every single rep. <laughs> that's, that's how you do it. Um, but you're gonna be running in the Diamond League final. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be 5k. Mm-hmm. So like, um, now listeners probably already know that. But uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we're excited meet for you. Too. So, yep, street meet. So yeah. our listeners are excited. They'll be watching you and uh, pumping you on. But yeah, what you've been doing this year has been, been pretty incredible. So Amazing. it's nice so. to be able to, to brag about you and, yeah. and have you on the podcast here. So, um, But I'm sure all our listeners know about how crazy that race was in Lausanne. So yeah, it was I, amazing. I think we should do a little little third bonus question here. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about your race for, for the listeners, uh, like what that meant to you. Uh, just from all the training you've done particularly yeah I mean it was good to like I don't know I feel like that race actually did a good job of showing like the work that I've put in this year to get to like another level whereas some of my other races this year like I was really bummed about my world's performance and then coming to do like the Poland 3k where I got I got fourth I think that was kind of just like increasing you know being like okay I feel like I can actually place well in a diamond league and so then having that kind of confidence to be able to actually like lead the race and run a fast time, um, I feel like it just showed me that I can do well in the final and have like the kind of finish to a year that I want to have. Yeah, yeah I think obviously if you look at the performance on paper, it's amazing. But if you watch the race, it's even more amazing. Yeah. And especially I think in terms of what you said, in terms of sh- displaying the work you've put in, like if you mm-hmm. watch that performance, it's like, holy shit, like she's on another level right now. For anyone who didn't see it, you end up running, you came second, very, very, very close race. And 0.01. You, and you mm-hmm. ran 826 mm-hmm. in not like a race that was nicely paced necessarily. Like that was right. slow, slowing down and speeding up and you led like the second half of it, maybe even a little more and just put the mixed squeeze on. The, the mixed squeeze the best, was best in full female runners. <laughs> Yeah, on the best female runners in the world, literally. That's, yeah. not, that's not an overstatement at that all. Was, that was the most amazing thing was so. like you watch like watching it on the TV because they had a big screen in the wall like the cool down warm up area mm-hmm. watching it Alicia just looked really confident dominant and focused and then mm-hmm. you look behind her you look at the athletes and the talent that's behind her and they're rigging yeah, they're and hurt. that's when you know it's like Alicia's it's putting the hurt like yeah. you don't see that mm-hmm. a lot and I think that was extremely exciting particularly for I think a lot of US uh, fan base like just like seeing yeah. it because like a lot of our races I think people see us cr- like well, the US athletes crush it in the u.s mm-hmm. and to see you go to europe and just put the herd on them in a diamond league yeah it's really awesome to see the next level yeah it's next level and, it, and just it puts the fear of god in them so <laughs> that was that was really exciting um yeah and, and exciting to see you go yeah. for that again in zurich mm-hmm. and the hard work yeah. just the hard like we've seen you work hard week in week out and it's good yeah. it's good to see that result and now we got zurich and we're excited and i'm sure our coffee club uh fans are going to be out there screaming out monsoon <laughs> so um but yeah no thank you for coming on and 
answering these questions and congratulations on Lausanne and Sweet. thanks guys go, go and crush it at, <laughs> go and crush it at Zurich so see you there see you there brother <laughs> hell yeah and we're back with contestant number two welcome to the OAC hot seat and this is a very special contestant her name is Sinta Yuvisa we call her Sinta she's our newest teammate yeah hell yeah <laughs> so, so first of all welcome yeah. thanks welcome thank to you the squad thank you, for, me. thank you for picking us we know we know you have many choices but we appreciate you uh joining the fold thanks it's been three weeks yeah what would you give us out of 10 <laughs> uh three weeks so 3.5 <laughs> hopefully it's only up from here what Yared, was Yared's? Yared's? No, okay so this is the thing i like that more because Yared gave us a 9 out of 10 in week Ooh. 1 but then we went down to an 8 out of 10 so we're trending downwards with Yared hopefully with Sinta we'll be trending up yeah, <laughs> by, the t- by the time we get to the full Yared's is going to be 3.5 out of 10 <laughs> yeah, you guys will cross at 5 um, but so I mean I think probably most of our listeners know who Sinta is but do you want to give like a brief introduction on, on yourself I know that's like an annoying thing to ask I mean yeah um, I represent Italy for running Italia. Italia. Italia Italia but I'm originally from Ethiopia yeah yeah as everyone knows probably I got adopted when I was nine years old and and then I went to the US to you know like you guys to try on running if it was good <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, <laughs> and now it looks like I'm pretty decent so let's see yeah what's so going to happen with joining your team yeah <laughs> since I won the NCAA 1500 yeah. This year. Were you second indoors? Yeah, my, I was second. And runner up. <laughs> one outdoors, got it done. So, And I think we'll have you on for a longer episode, I would hope, at some point, because your most amazing story, mm. I would say, like just a little tease, a little taste like for people. When she came to the US, she was a 400 meter hurdler. Yeah. And then she ended up <laughs> winning the NCAA title in the 1500 just four, was it three years or four years later? Three. Three. Is this going to be my fourth year in the US? So. Yeah, so I mean, that in itself is just crazy. So, <laughs> I think completely wild. <laughs> I think we'll get more into that at some point. But uh, today, you're in the hot seat. We've got a couple of questions for you. So, all right. So, do you want to do the serious or the dumb question first? Let's go with the serious one. Okay, serious <laughs> first and quote. So, like, we don't, we, th- we have maybe limited amount, but we do have. Uh, some coffee club listeners that are female athletes, track, uh, cross country runners, mm-hmm. uh, college, high school, wherever in the world. And um, we can't really, as males, give them much input on like experiences going through the system. So we thought we'd ask you the question to help them out. Like what experiences or what advice would you give them um, throughout your journey through running? Yeah. Uh, and what do you think would be valuable insights? I can't take you seriously right now because you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just trying I'm trying to, to be, ask a serious know. question and you're, uh, <laughs> you're making me laugh. Um, yeah, what kind of insights or advice would you give to them um, as young girls going through to, to become where you are right now, you know, professional athlete running for uh, Italia? Yeah. Um, what, what like little nuggets of uh, wisdom can you, so can you give So as Morgan said, I came as a sprinter, kind of mid-distance, 800. I yeah. think the longest I was 400 hurdle. Yet. Yeah, 400 hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing I would advise is just if you choose to commit and like a school as a coach, just to trust. Mm. Even though like when they asked me like to do cross and stuff, I was like, holy, you know, <laughs> like, you have to run this long. And I'm like, oh my God, do I have to do this? But then I just trust in my coaches and then, you know, just I love track no matter what. So I just trusted as as much as I could and you know it was like up and down but like just trusting your coach and just put the work and you know have the dream inside of yeah. you just like you know the yeah. fire the going fire. on yeah just we, yeah the trust thing is like it's kind of interesting because that's such I, a good answer yeah because yeah, <laughs> I feel like for me personally like you've come from like us international yeah going to the US yeah and there is a lot of trust that goes into trying to commit to a yeah. program making you do cross country um trying to really Mileage, just elevate like yourself things, yeah. yeah like we're we miles it, yeah and we, we had to do cross country as well <laughs> so yeah the trust process is kind of hard the like trust it, is hard because you you're committing to a system that you might not see the benefits initially but when you have a dream and you you're pushing it to the next level yeah it's going to pay off yeah yeah um exactly. so yeah i think i think it's amazing it's, yeah because it's like another one thing that like the other side of it is often we get questions about like what's the best way to train what's the best way to do this and people are 
searching for the answers on their own but if you have someone that you can trust that can do yeah. all that work for you and the reality is there's a there's a thousand different ways you can be an amazing runner but what's like there aren't a thousand ways is to like i don't know if i'm saying this right but there's only like you got to have that one person um or like a small few people that you trust yeah, and God there's you. only one way to go about that like, you yeah. have to have good relationships like you exactly. have to and there's only one way to do that but there are like a thousand different ways to train so if you have that person that's much more impo- important than the actual specifics of you know what you're doing i mean exactly. and nowadays like everyone's like the coach is high the coaching level is so high so they are really good at their job but yeah and well answered well answered <laughs> um now we go to the dumb question let's go now <laughs> this question i'm interested to see your response on it um if you've ever had it happen to you before in a run but there's an ego when it comes to males right with the, yeah. with the running and stuff particularly recreational runners or just hobby joggers have you ever had the experience of you're going for a regular run you're a very talented NCAA champ, very good runner. Um, but if you had like a recreational man, hobby jogger guy that you, you like see him and you're catching up to him when you pass him, has he ever tried to pass you back and have the challenge? Yes, it happens, happens. It happens? Like, couple, last, last week, I think here. It happened or, yeah, 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 yeah. So like, how, how do you react to that? Do you just let them go and let them have their ego or do you like just drop them and be like, yep. Sometimes I'm. I try just like, I speed up and just to show them like, <laughs> I'm not like jogging, you know, but sometimes I'm like, whatever. Like, Put him in the hurt. It's my easy day. Come on. I'm yeah. not going to waste my time. <laughs> my so it would depend on like how you're feeling. Yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. going to drop them if I'm feeling yeah. good. Yeah. Or oh, it's like, oh, just, you have your ego. I'm, yeah, I've done day. it sometimes just like, you know, speed up and yeah. I'm like, all right, if you want to go ahead. Did it ever happen at Old Miss in college? When you're just running around uh, Old Miss? Maybe a few times it's like random college guys, you know, running in the the park yeah. we have a little bit. But yeah, it did happen a few times. Yeah. And but you just, just, you just, you just depends go. on my vibe, yeah. Yeah, depends yeah. on your vibe. Yeah. That's a good answer. That's what I thought it was yeah. going <laughs> <laughs> Cinta is the type of person who is not afraid to take her easy days real easy when nah, she's feeling yeah. it. Like, I mean, you don't run as many miles or anything as like Alicia, for example. So I think, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Exactly. sometimes take it easy whatever yeah. but I, I love the uh the reoccurrence of it though because now we've had alicia and you say that there's been multiple occurrences <laughs> of guys just trying to drop you guys yeah and you guys are like some of the best runners in the world <laughs> it's just it's just funny it is funny yeah yeah and then yeah. they just get dropped by you <laughs> yeah. the reaction man yeah. Yeah. next time i will ch- chase them like i will just yeah just, just, just run them down yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Will, I will promise put them in the hurt locker yeah, yeah. i love that but yeah, I think it was brief, but thank you very much for stopping by, Cinta. Yeah. Thank you for and having we're gonna, me. We're going to have you, to your word, we're going to have you on the pod and be able to uh, explore your journey much more and give our All Coffee right. Club uh, listeners a... And hopefully by then I can give you a higher grade. Yeah, yeah. Three and a half out of ten right now. Yeah. That's what we're getting right now. <laughs> Only up in there. Only thank up from there. Okay, thank you. And we are back with final contestant on the OAC hot seat or whatever we're calling this thing. Sage Herder, welcome back to the show. Great. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, the listeners won't be able to tell us, but both Cinta and Alicia are, are in the background now because they are excited to hear what Sage has to say after their answers. So I think we just roll into it, Ollie. Roll into it. So uh, which question do you want to get asked first, the uh, serious one or the dumb one? Uh, probably the serious one. Three for three. On, 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 <laughs> everyone, uh, <laughs> everyone said serious. Okay, so um, we have like a... A fo- hopefully we do have a following of uh, young young girls uh, that have the same ambitions and dreams that, that mm-hmm. uh, a lot of girl- girls in our team have and uh, we wanted to, as males we can't give them input or advice or any kind of experiences of what you've gone through um, as a professional runner so we thought we'd ask you um, for the list- lady listeners out there who are runners in high school, college or wherever in the world, mm-hmm. what advice would you give them from the experiences and the journeys you've faced as a professional woman athlete Uh, to where you are now that you think would be helpful to them yeah I feel like maybe some good advice would just be like in sort of a team setting Mm -hmm. like your teammates aren't really your competition it might feel like they're your competition but it's actually like the people outside of your team that you should be focusing that energy towards that's great oh Oh, we've actually been really lucky (laughs) because we've had three different kind of answers but all elements that are really important I think that was amazing advice holy shit yeah because I think for a lot of people, like that's probably is something that they really struggle with, especially maybe when you're younger. Or I think college teams probably. Yeah. I feel like, especially like now that I'm a pro, I feel like a little bit more validated in my talent and my ability in the sport. But like earlier on, you feel like a lot more insecure about it. 
and it's hard like not, not to kind of go ham on day to day just with the people that you can directly compare yourself to yeah no I, I think that's so valid like because I mean you only race so much but you're running you're doing workouts like two times a week and sometimes you just want to prove to yourself or your coach or to everyone that you're just the best but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the smartest thing to do yeah so. yeah so having a having a team around you that also has that kind of similar mindset that you're working together you're building kind of something up together which i mean colorado women have done that they've they've proven that winning uh you know they won ncaa cross mm -hmm. with with uh with that kind of mentality i'm sure so that's really a uh, good input for a lot of girls going through is that not everyone's your competition your teammates should be there to help you and build you up so um that's great that's great yeah. advice i think we couldn't ask for anything better than that now it's the dumb question okay. which is uh the interesting one we're um, so excited to hear it. Yeah, because we've had responses from both Cinta and Alicia about it, and we want to know your input. Okay. And I'm very interested to hear Sage's input on this one. Um, males in the running world have a big ego, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's professional, recreational, hobby joggers. And I'm sure you've experienced it, but the situation when you're on a run, you're on your easy run, it's not a workout or anything like that, and uh, <laughs> you have a hobby jogger, recreational mm -hmm. runner, whatever, he's yeah. running and you pass him. And then he tries to realize that like, it's like, oh, it's a threat to him. It's a race. So he goes, it's a race. So he passes you back. So what do you do in that? If you've had that experience before, I don't know if you have, but what do you do in that situation? Um, do you just drop him? Do you just completely put the world of hurt into him? Or do you just go, nah, I'm not going to deal with it today. Let him go. Uh, how do you deal with that as a, as a woman runner going through when you've got these males just trying to, trying to pick, up, pick you up and drop you when you're just obviously running faster than them in an easy, regular I, run? I mean, if, I'm, if I like started out my run where I told myself I'm really gonna take it easy and recover today, yeah. I won't really engage in it. But pretty much any other time, I will just hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we were hoping for. Uh, it's not quite the same, but Morgan and I were doing a long run yeah. uh, earlier this year, and there were like a couple of guys who were going like around the same pace as us. They weren't like intentionally like trying to drop us or anything. But it was just awkward, and we had to drop that. We had to pass them. So <laughs> yeah. we went from running like nice six forties to like a couple of six tens. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's, just, it's just what you gotta do. It's yeah. just what you gotta do. So like I can imagine like, because it, it's definitely like that's the thing, right? With uh, the male hobby jogger is they see a girl pass them in a run, and they and they, they see it as a threat, right? They want to yeah. they want to challenge it, and I feel like you just be like, I could just drop you it like that. It's like, would you do yeah. it or would you just let them go? Is a good response. Like, if it's my easy day, it's my easy day. But if you're going to get me in a day when I feel good, I'm going to drop you. Yeah. Uh, drop your ass. So. I'll get really uh, combative about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was expecting from Sage. As you should. As, as you, you should. should. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's going to feel pretty good. I, I don't know why, but I'm thinking of that time when you did, was it when you had Drew pace you in the, in the four, 400? 400, yeah, yeah. And you're just sprinting with guys, and you're just like looking yeah. so good. Didn't you drop Sam Parsons? <laughs> I think off, he... off the line. Yeah. <laughs> no disrespect to the boys. They're, no, they're no, really no. good runners, but I'm just like they were helping you out. But it was it was uh, no enjoyable to see. No disrespect to the slow twitch guys. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes sometimes. Just got uh, to face the music. Well, yeah. Thank you very much, Jay. Yeah. yeah. Those answers were spectacular. Great. Pleasure yeah. having you I on again. I can't wait to hear the other answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be able to hear them. Yeah, and um, that's great. And Sage will be running the 800 in Zurich. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, Coffee Club fans, letting you guys know, Sage will be out there. Uh, it's going to be a pretty amazing race. You've had a pretty incredible season, and it's going to be nice to cap it off in Zurich. Mid D, mid yeah. D power. Let's go. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Sage. And now it's just us again. I think that went pretty well. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll let our listeners decide, but I think that was a nice little spice up, little addition, and you get a bit of an insight from, uh, from our women's team on certain, certain topics. They all had amazing answers, which I, I did expect that they're all amazing individuals, and obviously there's reasons that they've had the success that they've 100%. had. So that was cool. But, yeah, let us know what you guys thought about that because, yeah, then we'll, if you guys like it, we'll do more of that, and we'll obviously take questions from you guys. But, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for episode yeah. 50 then yeah no it's been it's been lonely without george and his topless uh topless self but uh yeah. don't worry he'll be back next week and uh you'll get you'll get your hopefully uh, topless hopefully topless you'll get your uh, input of george beamish your fix your fix of george beamish next week but uh just from morgan and i out here in st moritz thank you very much for uh for having us here and uh, yeah thanks for listening yeah we'll see you guys next time